All right, we are back here on the Iona Athletics Podcast. Joining me on the phone this week is the head coach of the Iona baseball team, Paul Panic is on the line. Coach Panic, welcome. How are you? Not too bad. Yourself? Trying to stay warm out here. Trying to stay warm here. It's, I imagine you guys are trying to stay warm, trying to get in shape for the baseball season in January. Yeah, we make it. We make it work, man. Like I tell them all the time, I don't care what you look like. Bundle up. We're going outside. Don't care. <laughs> yeah, you can't care. You have to get ready when you're playing games in February. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Speaking of that, what's it like to actually be playing competitive baseball in February? It feels like it's much, much earlier. Even the big leaders are showing off the camp. It's it's just different. I mean, I I mean we've grown up in it, um, you know, playing and coaching, and it, it just starts our guys' clock earlier, right? So we'll, we're we're coming back next Wednesday. Um, we'll have four live weekends before we get going. So kind of similar to you know to the big league camp, but but they have a couple extra weeks, right? They they have I think usually about six, um, you know, and we only have four, so it kind of speeds the clock up a little bit. Yeah, it does kind of speed up a little bit, and like. Before we get into your schedule, which is very interesting, I did take a look at that. Like, what, like, what drew you specifically to baseball? Why do you love this game so much? I think it's, I think it's the the competition, the camaraderie. Like, I'm, I'm friends with guys that I've played with, you know, 20 years ago, and you know, it's it carries with you your whole life. And then, and then the competition side, right? It's, it's, it's a game where you where you play a lot. You know, you play, you know, major leaguers play every day. You know, we play, you know, four times a week. You know, it allows you to. Let's let's say you fail. Let's say you don't have a good game. Let's, it lets you get back on the horse quick, and um, you know, and that just kind of makes it more intriguing. You know, you know, I always like football and basketball, but like football, you only play once a week, for example. But you know, baseball, you're out there more often. Yeah, that's true. Because like, if you lose a football, you have to sit there and stew for an entire week. Sometimes two, if you have to buy. But like the baseball, if you lose one, ah, we have another one tomorrow. We can get right back on the horse and try again. Exactly. Exactly. All right, so speaking of, you said bringing everybody together. You have an interesting task with this roster because you have a lot of returning pieces, a bunch of new guys. It's a, it's a mix here, but some freshmen coming in, some transfers coming in as well. So as a coach, you have to you have to do like blend that group together to play as one team. I think that the guys, I think it happens, you, know, you have to let it happen organically, right? You can't force that. Um, the, the returners have to have an open mindset. You know, and understand that guys, that my that my job is to bring in the best talent year in and year out to compete for jobs. You know, whether somebody had a job last year, you know, they have to understand that they have to compete. And once once you kind of get past the initial like, oh, there's you know X amount of new freshmen and a couple JUCO guys and a couple four year transfers. You know, the guys the guys molded and kind of got together. You know, as kind of the fall progressed pretty good. Yeah, that that make that does make some sense, and I want to look at your schedule a little bit because for a lot of years the Iowa teams really basically just travel up and down the East Coast, but this year the schedule is like a much wider. I've seen them go outside the East Coast. It's a trip to New Mexico in February. What's it like that, for the guys to be able to you know get to experience more of the country this this go around? And that that was one of the things that that when I took the job, I, you know, you know, talking talking with our athletic director and our sports staff, I was like, listen, I want to give these kids something different. Um, you know, you know, let's try going somewhere. Let's just try something different. Um, you know, and then, you know, I was able to get the New Mexico state trip and then, you know, spring break trip, we go down to VCU and then, and then we're on the road for, for the entire week. And, you know, we work our way West, we play Purdue and Illinois and play UConn and it's, and it's going to be a good, it's, it's going to be a good trip. And it's something that the, that, you know, the seniors have, have an experience. They haven't experienced a, a flight. They haven't experienced a, a full spring break trip. So, um, you know, you know, it's letting the boys experience something different. Yeah, you mentioned that spring, that full spring break trip. You got a lot of interesting games in there. Obviously, you mentioned the VCU series. You have the game against UConn down in Virginia. Then you go to two Big Ten schools, Purdue and Illinois. How do you think that trip will help bring the group together, get them ready for the max schedule? I think for I think for me, it's twofold. One, the boys, the boys will be. You know, we're we're obviously we obviously take weekend trips up till that. Um, but when you're on the road for 10 days together, that really, in my opinion, I've seen it, the guys really mold and gel together, you know, and that's on the outside part of the ball on the, on the inside part of the game, you know, we're going to get challenged. VCU's a top 40 club, you know, UConn's a top, you know, super regional team, right. And a regional team and, you know, same thing, you know, Purdue's big 10, Illinois is a top 40 club. So, you know, we're going to come into conference play having played some very good competition. 
So once we get into conference play, hopefully that'll translate. You know, the game will slow down for the guys a little bit, and you know, you know, we'll have we'll have good success. Yeah, you hope you have good success. And obviously, this team, I feel like the core of his team is its pitching. So, like, you talk a little bit about like how important the pitching is to you guys. Oh, I mean, with with most collegiate teams, um, pitching is what makes 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 your team go. Um, you know, with, with Stephen Hansen at the top of the rotation, we know that we're going to get six, seven quality innings out of him, and he's going to give us a chance to win every single. It doesn't matter who we're facing that night, if it's uh, you know first round draft pick or somebody else. He, we're we're going to have a chance. To, we're going to be in the game and have a chance to win. Getting Mario Ferrioli back after being out last year um, is huge. Um, you know, we got Hunter Sibley, um, you know, sophomore coming back. You know, we you know we have a couple good freshmen, um, a, a couple good transfers, a um, couple back end guys back. Antonio Valari, Jimmy Sharkey. You know, some of those guys coming back. Um, you know, from last year, we we returned the majority of the staff, um, and we added a couple and we added a couple pieces to it. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Another thing that people may not realize who don't follow programs super close is that you're one of the few Iona programs that doesn't play directly on camps. You guys play City Park down the street in New Rochelle. So, like, I sort of, like, home field advantage you guys get from that playing there. Well, the the beauty is that the dugouts are right on top of the field. Yeah, it's a big park. The wind's always blowing. It's always cold. And in center field, there's a, there's a big white house to where if you have good left-handed pitch and the ball comes right out of that white house. Right. So so for us, a lot of times teams come in and they're they're sitting there complaining. You know, our first baseman will be like, man, these guys are these guys are asking about the house. And, you know, so so for us, I think it takes it's an advantage for us because it makes them take their mind off of it. Right. They they have to kind of battle with some outside elements that, you know, teams aren't normally used to. Yeah, it does make some sense because like people are used to like, oh, you know, the pristine stadiums, the batter's eye, whereas you got a house in center field, and you're, it's not as easy for the opponents to track the ball, whereas you guys are used to it. Right, right, right. We practice every day, right? So for our guys, it's business as usual where, where teams will come in and are like, wait, wait hold on, wait, what? what? What's going on? What is this? Yeah, exactly. And you guys last year did not have a great year. You finished ninth in the max standing. So what do you think you guys have to improve on the most to climb in the max standings this year? You know, I think I think this year we we need to be better offensively. Um you know, and I think we've gotten better. Um, you know, we've added some key pieces that'll that'll that will plug right into the line and play. Um, you know, we and again we return the entire pitching staff. You know, and we were top four, top five in almost every major category, right? So if you're if you finish ninth, but you're top four, top five in every major category on the pitching side, then that that means the other side of the ball, you know, didn't do it for you, right? So my my job and my goal this summer was to bring in some some really high level freshmen. Um, and it's a very, very high level transfers and JUCO guys. And, and, you know, I think as a coaching staff, we were able to do that. Um, you know, so now it's just going to be, see how the cookie crumbles in the spring, you know, guys, you know, we're eventually we're going to have, we're going to have an injury somewhere. Something's going to happen somewhere and then we're going to be faced with some adversity. Um, and we're just going to have to be ready for that when it hits us. Yeah, you're ready for that one. And you mentioned the last thing I want to ask you is like, you talk about the cold weather practice. You guys are outside like all the time right now and getting ready for it. So like, is it a culture shock for some of the guys who come from warmer clients? Like, oh, I'm practicing baseball outside in January. Most of our guys are are, are northeast ish. Yeah. You know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, um, PA. So most of them are used to it, but but for some guys, the timing is different, right? They're not used to being outside in a sweatshirt and a beanie on January fifteenth. But that's but that's where we'll be. So if there's no snow on the ground, that's where we will be. So. Um, for those guys, I think that's that that's the greater adjustment for them. Yeah, so let's hope there's no snow on the ground. I own a baseball opens February 14th down in Charleston. Coach, thanks for the time and best of luck this season. Thanks, guys. All the best.